Okay, we are now live. Good afternoon, okay. everybody. We're here for the Asheville Transit Committee, August 16th, 2022, from 5 to 7 p.m. We meet on the third Tuesday of the month and, and virtually from 5 to 7. The Transit Committee is a volunteer citizen board designed to offer input and guidance to the Asheville Transit System and the City Council. We do not set or change routes, control Asheville Transit budget, or have authority over staff, drivers of the management company. We are a group of citizens like you who are here to ensure community concerns are taken into consideration when setting public transit policy. All right now, we'll go into um, our members and see who we have on today. I'm Harvey Harrell, I'm the chair of transit. Sandy Aldridge, are you here today? Okay. Maybe Sandy will join us uh, soon. Brandon Oliver, are you with us today? Brandon Oliver. Maybe Brandon will join later. Uh, we couldn't get in touch with Georgia Burks. So I'll say her name anyway. Georgia Burks, are you here with us today? Okay, John Basson, he's not going to be here today. Bill Loftus, are Present. you here today? Present. How you doing, Bill? <laughs> Glad you're here today. I'm good. Thank you, Harvey. And Colin Kenton. Colin is here. Hi, Colin. Uh, as of now, we do not have uh, enough people. Or to vote on anything. But we can still go ahead and go along on to the meeting and go along with the meeting. We don't have a quorum. Um. So we'll go ahead and go into our read the welcome announcement. Um, we can't approve the minutes until we get more people on. Uh, the public of uh, public explanation standards and opportunities. I'll go ahead and read that. We welcome public input in our meetings. We're allowed to comment on, we're allowed to comment on any matter upon consideration prior to a final vote. If you may have something to say, raise your hand, Chair will recognize you. There are also two public comment periods at the start of the meeting and one at the end. Currently, we don't have anyone in the queue for the day. Any persons addressing the committee is limited to three minutes. However, a group may have a single spokesperson who will be allowed 10 minutes. The committee will receive written information from individu any individuals or groups that cannot conclude their presentations within these time limitations. If you would like to have any item discussed in more detail as part of our agenda, we ask that you speak with a member of the Transit Committee in order to have that item addressed during our next meeting. Thank you for your attendance. Your input is valuable. Okay. Um, we have no one in the queue for public comment. And bus station improvement project, uh, plexiglass uh, replacement. Amy, all right, I'll take that, Harvey. Um, uh -huh. So this is two points under our ongoing bus stop improvement project. That one million dollar grant to make different bus stop improvements. Um, so we're replacing shelters, we're adding benches, 
ADA pads, things like that. But two items just for today's meeting. Um, there are some shelters around the city that the shelter itself is in, you know, usable, pretty good condition, but is missing some of the plexiglass. Um, Jessica, if you want, I can share my, oh, you got it. So yeah, there's plex plexiglass missing, which is just those panels in the shelter. So this is a survey that you all would be really helpful if you all start using this to re help report. We're, you know, we're out there too looking and trying to make an inventory of where the plexiglass needs to be replaced. But while you all are out in the community, if you see a bus shelter where the plexiglass needs to be replaced, you can use this survey and we'll be notified of it. And so we can add it on our list. Um, similarly, and within the same survey, there at every bus station, sorry, every bus stop, there is a missing stop ID number. Sorry, there is, Jessica, can I share my screen real quick? Absolutely. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so at every bus stop, there should be under the main bus stop sign, a smaller circle sign um, that gives information with for the number to text for real time bus arrival information, as well as a three digit code, um, or actually now we're getting into four digits because we just reached 1000. But there's this code here, which is the bus stop ID number, which is needed to be able to get the real time information. Um, so every stop in the city should have should have this ID number. And if you look at Google Maps, um, there's a bus stop and you click on it. They should all have this stop ID number. Um, I don't know if you can see me highlighting it. But anyways, um, in some bus stops, we've noticed that that circle sign is missing. And so we're just trying to take inventory of that and make sure that we have those circle signs out there at every bus stop. So you can use this survey um, and also make note of that and we'll be able to go out there and get that updated. Does anyone, and ask for you know location information, um, route direction if you know it. Does anyone have any questions about that? Yes, I would like to say something. Okay. Uh, I know when I uh, did uh, report that one uh, right here at Caribou and Hendersonville mm -hmm. Road, uh, they they put it up, you know, in a timely fashion. And then I looked at it again. I said, they screwed the top one in. They didn't screw the bottom one in. <laughs> so... I had to call the Sean and tell them to get her back out there so they could uh, screw it back in. So the sign would have one at the uh, bolt at the top and a bolt at the bottom. So they did that uh, in, a, in a quick fashion, but I appreciate that. Yeah, we appreciate you bringing that to our attention. Mm -hmm. Haley, this is Bill. I wanted to ask, is that technology uh, reliable? Um, last time I rode the bus, I really wanted to know when the bus was coming and I didn't know that thing existed. So, uh, is it reliable? Yeah, it's reliable. It's, um, connected to like an open APC source that is, um, sh showing, yeah, has all the real time information based on the, the bus G GPS. Fantastic. Thanks. Hi. I will add on that reliability that maybe buses, I don't, for some reason, when I catch a bus in the afternoon and the buses come in from downtown, it will gain about five or six minutes real quick. So mm -hmm. it shows the buses arriving like five minutes late 
And if I take that into consideration in my getting to the bus stop, mm -hmm. I'll miss the bus because all of a sudden it will quickly find five or six minutes somewhere and, and get mm -hmm. on that. Um, but other than that, I, I usually find it reliable. Is that um, when you're getting that late information, where are you getting that? Is that like Google Maps? Is that transit app? No, that's that's. 141 through the texting okay. yeah yeah I, I use that exclusively and and um and that's the n one stop at uh, um, trader joe's mm -hmm. um but yeah sometimes it it will say i've got 10 minutes to get to the stop and i'll start walking and the next thing you know i look at it and says i've got five minutes mm -hmm. and it only took me one minute <laughs> right okay and, uh, I've missed the bus a couple times that way when when I looked at it and thought it was one time. And mm -hmm. it up, so. so the predictions might be off, <clears throat> like their traffic predictions. Yeah, it's, it's only at, I think that's 206 is the number. Okay. Yeah, anytime there's um you, you see something that's not uh, right, if you will, let us know because we can we can go back and we can check to see the issue might have been with the various technologies, if you will, because we've got, like Haley said, the, the texting, then there's the apps, which are based on real-time data coming from buses. So, um, we have the ability to, to potentially identify what the issue is if we have that specific, like it was at this stop at this time of day on this route, that information is very helpful for us. And you can send it to us in an email, um, you know, when it happens, if, if needed. Yeah, and sometimes maybe after a couple of years, a bus stop is moved. Maybe it was on one side of the street before, and then it's moved down the street, but it was never updated on Google Maps. I don't think that would make five minutes of a difference, but that's something that could be going on if it needs to be updated on the back end. So just let us know. <clears throat> okay. Um, so please uh, share, share the uh, link to the survey with people you know. Mm -hmm. um, okay, is uh, the next one, I can go ahead and take that if you guys want. Art service updates. Go ahead, Jessica. Mm -hmm. So um, just you know, as you know, we had to make two pretty significant cuts to the route um, back in, well, back in June, I think. Um, we have since returned the N3 and the W6 that we cut. And so that's back to regular service hours um, starting on July. It had started on July 10th. We still are operating the WE1 on a reduced service schedule, and we continue to have um, occasional sporadic, I would say, uh, cuts to service um, due to continuing driver shortages and last minute call outs that happen. And so, you know, we've got a lot of, a lot of, um, applicants in the queue and so we're trying to still build that employee number and I, hopefully LaShawn can give us an update on that but um, we still are not at a place yet that we're comfortable bringing the WE1 back to re, um, full service since we're still having some issues with staffing but we will do that as soon as we possibly can and we'll let folks know when we're ready to do that. Hey, Jessica, I've got a question on that one. Have we noticed any deterioration in ridership based on the frequency reduction on W1? Um, 
No, I Haley's shaking her head. I don't know for sure. I don't know if we've pulled pulled numbers or not, but that's, we can do that. We can pull ridership numbers from that route and look at last year versus this year or several months before versus now after cut. And there's, um, we always retack attach a ridership report to every agenda we send out um, and post online. So you can also compare like this month to the last month as well. And is that by route, Haley? Yes. Yeah, it's got it by route. I, it, it doesn't have last year, so does it, Haley? No, that, that wouldn't show last year. It would just show the last couple of months. Yeah, then the question is, is there a seasonality thing going on, right? So, right. Um, I just think that'd be important. I mean, because it was a pretty severe reduction. I, it, it'd be interesting to see what relationship of there is between riders and frequency. As we, we, if we could study that more, I think that'd be useful. I don't have any recommendations, but I was just curious about that. Okay, we can just compare that to our last year's ridership numbers and um, give you an update. <clears throat> Yeah, no, no special report. Yeah. It's not, you guys are too busy. <laughs> Haley, do you want to take the next one on transit tra app? Sure. So I don't know how many of you all use transit app, but it's basically a trip planning mobile app um, that previously was free. People use it, you know, to <laughs> try and see where they can go, where the next bus is based on their current location. Um, but they <clears throat> recently began charging users. I'm going to pull up this. So basically now if you try and use it, you can only get, I think it's like the three closest lines to you and anything that's further away, you're not going to be able to see um, in any future trip planning. So if it's 5.15 right now, if I'm trying to plan a trip for 8 p.m. tonight, um, I would have to pay to be able to, to do that. And we do have like a pretty, I forget how many riders it is. Um, I think it's somewhere around 250 daily daily users from Asheville um, at the moment. So this is kind of a blow for the ridership community here. Um, and obviously not everyone will be willing or able to pay for that monthly subscription or annual subscription. It's $4.99 a month and $25 annually. Um, so we're just educating, trying to educate riders and also our customer service staff on other options that are out there. Um, one of the options is Move It app. Um, I have the web version pulled up right now, but it's pretty standard, you know, typing in where you want to go based in your current location. Um, there's also Google Maps. Um, we have a swiftly real time map, which if I pull that up. <clears throat> can click this the direction that you're wanting to go and the stop nearest to you. Um, and it will give you information on the next arrival time. Um, you can also, like we were just talking about, that 41411 number, you can text that with the bus stop ID number, and you can always call um, our customer service. You can either press 1 and then use the bus stop ID number, or you can, um, I think it's 4, to talk to a customer service representative and they can help people out as well. So this is an article that... Um, our communications department put out today and they're posting on social media. Um, on the transit side, we sent out an email maybe an hour ago to um, anyone who subscribed to those art email updates. And we're working on getting some more information out there at the transit center and on the buses themselves, just so people are aware that this that this happened and that there's other options out there. 
Are these other things apps, Haley? Um, the Move app is also an app, yes. And Google Maps, obviously, like you can use that as an app on your phone. But then these other options, you can do that through SMS or call or the Swiftly real-time app. You can do it on your phone. Um, I found it's best on a web browser on a computer. But Move It app works pretty well. The only downside to it is that there are um, ads that you have to like click out of occasionally. But hmm. yeah, I personally think that Google Maps is the easiest to use. Um, but um, yeah, it's so it's disappointing. Transit app is is a very popular across the country, actually across the world, I think, and they've moved to the subscription-based model. And so they they have they do have clients or they have cities that they have agreements with where the city pays the the fee, if you will, um, and then makes it free for the user. But I think for us, they've quoted us that we'd have to pay like ten thousand dollars a year. And there's only what 250 users right now, and if we can just educate people to use one of these other options um, that are, I think, just as good, then hopefully we don't have to worry about it. And 250 know, daily users, but yeah, daily <laughs> users, yeah. Mm -hmm. Transit had all the different modes, like if you walked or if you Ubered or if you bus. Do the other ones have that, or are they all just bus? Um, I know Google Maps has all the options. You can um, select walking or um, Uber, or and it'll give you options or tell you how with what's the quickest and what the cost is. Yeah, and with Move It app, you can it is connected to Uber, um, and obviously it'll tell you if you need to walk to a stop. Okay, that's a shame. Mm -hmm. um so yeah while well, you're if you hear people talking about this as well <laughs> if you can help educate on this and if you hear of any i mean we have our eyes out there but if there are any other apps that you come across that are free and do this well as well you can let us know <clears throat> okay uh city staffing update Sure, I can take that. Um, so we have hired a new transit planning manager. So this will be Eunice's replacement. Um, her name is Amber Wagner, and she is starting work um, on August 29th. Um, and she's going to be working remotely for several months, but she's going to be coming to Asheville um, during this, you know, during this time where she's going to be working remotely, um, and she's eventually going to, of course, permanently relocate here. Um, but given the, the housing market and everything else, we're giving her a little bit of extra time to physically move here. Um, but she has a lot of great transit experience, including experience in North Carolina. And currently she is working in um the tucson area for a, a smaller transit system that's outside of tucson um so i'm definitely excited <laughs> to have her joining us here soon um she'll be here in person for the week of september um september 19th which is also when we're going to have our next transit committee meeting and um, and we have this on the agenda uh, in a minute, but we are going to have a multimodal commission and transit commission meeting in person that will be kind of a field trip. Um, and so she's going to be present for that so everybody can get to meet her. Um, and we're also about to do some interviews for our business services specialist in the transit division. 
Um, so this is a Amy's previous position. Um, and so I know Amy and I are very much looking forward to getting a, a new business services specialist to, to come in and help us with some of this stuff, including these meetings. Um, so we're holding interviews for that, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. And maybe by the time we have our next meeting, we'll have somebody on board potentially. And I think that's all I've got for our staffing. Um, LaShawn, do you want to give people an update about where you guys are? Hi, yes. Um, right now we're at 56 full-time operators. Um, we have we have an app on Indeed and a recruiter helping to get those get folks pre-screened once they apply um, and sent to me for interviews. Um, she's doing really great. I have currently um, three, five, four people cadetting and behind the wheel. Um, and three that are getting ready to, well, just got their permit and is in need to get their full driver's license. Um, they're not included in the 56 number. Um, we are also looking for customer service rep. We hired one, but it didn't work out. So we're, we threw that back out there so that we can get another customer service rep. And that's it. Okay. And you just hired okay. a new um, training and safety director. Yes. Um, on the RTP dev side, we lost our safety director and we just hired Lisa. Um, she just come on uh, a few weeks ago. Um, she's from Arizona. Um, so we're looking, we're, we're full staff for the RTP dev side. And we're looking forward to having her come in and get the the new folks in training and going getting good on the behind the wheel training and cadetting portion. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you, LaShawn. You're welcome. Uh, are there is there any more discussion on the uh, city staffing update or the staffing update? Uh, with the buses. Um, next is the discussion about the combined transit committee and multimodal transportation committee meeting. Jessica echoed a little bit about that a while ago. Uh, I'm looking forward to it on the 20th of September from 3.30 to 5.30. I'm hoping uh we got the majority of everybody coming on board for that have you heard anything about that jessica we did that poll um yeah Haley, did we send out actual calendar invite for that yeah okay mm -hmm. um yes i don't we have a handful of rsvps um i couldn't tell you the number right now i guess i can look <clears throat> I know there's a lot of interest from the multimodal commission members. And um, I know that we also are going to have, um, at least as of now, we're also going to have two of our assistant city managers attending as well. Um, and I'm planning to also, and it's a public meeting, of course, so anybody is invited to attend, but, um, I'm also going to make sure that the Better Buses folks and Just Economics, you know, get that information out as well. Um, so our our general plan is that we'll meet at the transit center and people can, if they're driving, they can park in the parking lot that's just to the south of the transit center and we'll we're going to take a behind the scenes tour of the the transit center um, so you guys can see the space that the um, RATP dev staff are in. I don't know if we'll all be able to fit in there because it's so small, but we want you guys to see the behind the scenes there at the, at the um, transit center. We'll also talk a little bit about um, 
next steps for what we do with the big parking lot next door to the transit center, which the city purchased about a year ago, year and a half ago, and some grant funds that we have to do some some additional planning around that. And then we will, um, I think we're going to take a bus, um, a, a special bus, separate bus from there over to the transit maintenance facility and give you guys the grand tour of the maintenance facility as well. Sounds good. Like I say, it's I was be looking super to fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and again, that's open to the, the public. So if there's anyone you want to invite, do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. didn't hear that before. That's, uh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Open to the public. <laughs> And you can yeah, reach out to me if you want me to send um, a calendar invite or anything. <clears throat> okay, sounds good. Does um, anybody else have any discussion on that? I just wanted to ask, um, is the transit center the main bus station down on Cox? Is that what we're talking about? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, next on our agenda is discussion about the uh, transit committee time. We've been going over this for a while now. Uh, I thought we were at a standstill, but have there been more individuals that I have? Well, I can tell from today mm -hmm. that there is some kind of problem uh, getting to the meeting because we only have like three members of, on board today. Uh, I think Brandon came in, but he left. Uh, but uh, we only have three committee members here today. How many committee members do we have? Seven. Do we yeah, we currently have seven, but we could have as many as 11. And we have in the past had that many. Yes. Yeah, um, so we go ahead. So originally for years, this transit committee has been meeting from 3.30 to 5.30. Um, but because attendance has been, I guess, sparse, we recently held that um, poll trying to get different meet, potential meeting times. And based on the results of that survey, the 3.30 to 5.30 did work for most people, but there were two people who, who had a preference for the five to seven. One of those people has since resigned from the committee. Um, and the other, I believe it was a situation where they could do the 3.30 to 5.30, um, but kind of preferred the other. So we just wanted to see if this is working for everyone. Um, obviously, we don't want to keep going back and forth. Like, we need to be consistent with the time. Um, but just wanted to bring it up, I guess. Well, we did miss having the last two meetings due to lack of agenda items, correct? And I'm wondering if people have just lost interest from you know, if they're if we're not meeting on a regular basis, mm -hmm. people can kind of get out of whack on um, mm -hmm. whether it's worthwhile or not. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you send it out, don't you expect people to accept a meeting notice, or is it set, it's sent in the form of a meeting notice, isn't it, Haley? Or Amy? Amy, Amy sends it out, right? Right. Usually. And I Amy. Amy, you usually call people ahead of time as well. I do. Yeah. Well, that's unfortunate. The thing about it is, is people sign up for, uh, they put the application in, they know what time the application is stating for everyone to meet. Everybody gets on board with that, and then after that, there's something that interrupts that mm -hmm. uh, flow but like I said we've been having a meeting from 3 30 to 5 30 for uh, I've been here since 2017 but uh, 
What? Um, I don't understand because what, people are here and there, and I know they got what's it different places to be, and we're just trying to stick with the time, which would be beneficial for the committee as well as others. And on staff side, we're trying to make sure we have actual things for you all to do and contribute to actionable items yes. or like the survey things that will help, I think, both of us. Mm -hmm. all right. yes, Haley, are you saying, Haley, are you saying sometimes we lack topics to talk about? I think there are always things we could discuss, but there's sometimes not things that are always um, like things to be voted on necessarily. Okay. Well, if you need help with that, I got plenty of options. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, I've got a question. Um, what's the definition of a quorum? Because we can't just let this thing go moribund like this. Is it a percent of the of the group, or is it a certain number? What is it? What does a quorum mean? Oh. A it's quorum is, plus one. Yeah, we have seven members, so uh, we need four people to be enjoying. Okay, so just adding people won't necessarily get us to a quorum. We still have to have a half of whatever number, right? Right, half right. I mean, we can certainly, we can if we can try to recruit more members, we, we can go up to 11, I think it is. And if we can recruit members that are able to participate, then that does help with the quorum. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we put out, the notice I think the clerk's office does every month puts out a notice about signing up to be on the transit committee. Um, and, you know, I do think that there are things, I, I obviously it's like a catch 22 where we don't have a quorum or we don't have action, actionable items. Um, and so we cancel a meeting, which then might, impact the folks showing up so that lack of consistency like colin is stating is definitely a contributing factor i think so um you know i do i do think we can work a little bit more once especially once we get more fully staffed to have some to have some agenda items that are more actionable and um, have some more discussion type opportunities as well so we can hear from people. So there's definitely room for improvement. I guess the question for you guys is, do you want to stick with this time that we're doing now from five to seven and keep trying it? Or do we want to go back to 3.30 to 5.30 and still continue to try to get more people. Um, that's kind of the, the question for you at the moment. Today's so the three of you that are always always here <laughs> religiously, <laughs> what works better for you time, timing-wise? Well, I'm a religious good. time One. freak, so uh, the 3.30 to 5.30 is good. The 5.00 to 7 is good with me. And this is a in this our first month at the five to seven. This is our second month. Second month. I must have missed last month. Okay. Um, so was it? Did we have a non? We we didn't have quorum last time either. So we got two straight without a quorum at the new time. Is no. that where we are? I think we, we had, had a quorum, quorum at our last meeting. We had a meeting. quorum last time. We did as well. Okay. Yeah, we had. All right. Well, maybe we hadn't been five to seven long enough. To answer your question, I prefer three to five, but I can do five to seven. Uh, either one works for me. Um, but if we're just tried twice here, and that's what everybody wanted before, maybe it's too early to make a judgment. Okay. Um, I would express an opinion. I think we should try to be regular, even if there's only one thing to talk about or if it only takes 30 minutes. I think that's better than skipping a meeting. And I also think that these meetings – need to have room, or this group needs to have room for more discussion as opposed to just action on something we don't know anything about because 
I think if the if the agenda is simply about taking action on something we've never talked about before, I think that's extremely difficult to render an opinion on. I think we'll be more effective as a group if we allow our process to be more engaging and discussion oriented. And so the fact that there's a little bit of open room in the agenda, I think, is marvelous. Um, I think we ought to take advantage of it. My my yeah. personal opinion. I, I agree with well, Bill. Personally, I, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I agree, with Bill. I agree with Bill on that, and and also, just because our meeting is from five to seven doesn't mean we have to consume the entire two hours. And mm -hmm. if, if we just want to get together over the minutes, have some discussion, and call it at thirty minutes, yeah, you know, then then that's good, you know, and yeah. and we move on. Personally. Um, I'm like this. Uh, when COVID came through, it necessarily changed the world. Before COVID came through, we had 11 committee uh, members, uh, people knocking on the door to get into the committee, to be on it. And there was no problem whatsoever. The, the meetings that we were having in person were fantastic. Uh, we didn't have enough time to say all the things that we needed to say. And like I said, since COVID came through, it has changed uh, America drastically and Asheville as well. So are you saying this is all, this downfall of this committee has basically happened in the last two years? To me, exactly. Because before we were like strong, we were really strong. Yeah, I would agree. It was it was not as um, not as bad as it is now. We did have quite a bit of turnover, but we were not having quorum issues. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and we had definitely had a lot more members. So, um, you know, we can with the clerk's office about the possibility of going back to in-person meetings that's something that we could we could talk about um the one of the issues we face from a technology standpoint is that if we go back to in person then and i don't totally understand that so don't shoot the messenger but we if we go back to in person we don't have the ability to do a combination of virtual and in-person. So we can't have like people on the computer while the rest of us are sitting in a room together. Um, hopefully that's something that changes at some point, but we can't do like a hybrid meeting. Go ahead, Bill. Well, I was in a, I was in a meeting a month or two ago with the downtown Asheville committee that had both. We were in person and somebody was calling in. So that technology may exist. Yes, it does. Here. I think she's referring <laughs> to the YouTube part of it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, I don't yeah, know how and forgive me, I don't understand. I don't understand all of it, but we can have a conversation with the clerk's office about about it. Um, yeah, if it's in person, then for some reason it can't be also live streamed on YouTube. Um, so we shall see. But um, okay, so what I'm hearing from everybody is let's keep the same time. Let's stick to it and. Keep trying. And I also heard that you you guys are each going to recruit three people to be on the transit committee. Always <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Yeah. To co-workers and my next door neighbors. So <laughs> is there exactly. is there a is there a process? for moving back to live meetings? I mean, is it does it take a quorum approval of the members or does it take administration approval? What is what is that process? Um, 
Well, of course we wouldn't want to, I personally wouldn't want to make that decision without the member's input. Um, but from a city side, we would have to coordinate that with the clerk's office and um, make sure that our old meeting room is available for us and that nobody else is using it during that time, especially if we stick from five to seven too, we have to make sure that people will have access to the building. So, so there's some like administrative stuff, but we wouldn't, I wouldn't just make that call without you guys being, uh, having input in it and helping make the decision. Okay, to that. All right. Uh, we'll go to old business now. Uh, need an update on the art physical year 2022 transit bus acquisition. Okay. Um, so I can take these next two items under old business because they're somewhat related, but. Um, so we ordered um, buses a while ago that we are expecting to get soon. We're going to get four new buses um, in September, probably the end of September is my guess. And then we have another three buses that will be arriving at the end of the year, likely in December. So we're going to have seven new buses. Um, and then for the next bullet point about the grant application, uh, breaking news, we actually got a pretty significant grant. We just learned this yesterday. Um, we had applied for um, a federal transit administration grant to purchase six new hybrid buses and three uh, replacement batteries for three of our hybrid buses and we were awarded the grant and it's $4.2 million. So we're super jazzed about that because um, we didn't really have any more grant funds anymore to buy buses. So we were looking at a pretty significant expense if we wanted to keep buying buses. So um, we will, you know, we there's some administrative things we have to do for accepting the grant money and, of course, ordering new buses and bus production takes anywhere between 12 months and 18 months. But uh, we just wanted to, to give you guys that good news because we need our fleet to be in a state of good repair, as they call it. Um, we've got, I think almost half of our fleet at this moment is almost aged out. So these new buses that we're getting in the next few months, plus being able to order six new buses is really gonna help our overall fleet be um, healthy. Uh, Jessica. Um Weren't we supposed to get four new buses at the end of July? <laughs> yes, Harvey. Yes, we were supposed to get those four new buses um, actually two years ago, I think. Um, and they keep, they have been pushing back, pushing back, pushing back. Um, I will just say that I don't think we'll be ordering buses from that company again anytime soon. Um, it's a different company than what we had than, than the vast majority of our fleet. Um, so they have promised us once again that these four buses will be here in September. Um, I'm not holding my breath, but I have seen the, I've seen pictures of them being produced. So I know that they exist They're They've already got them painted uh, in our, our color scheme. So I know they're ours and not just somebody other their, else's buses. They sent me pictures of. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I do think that I, I'm reasonably confident that they will be here in September, but I'm also 
like I said, not holding my breath. So the ones that we have in coming in December, those are Gillig buses, and that is the manufacturer that that we typically buy buses from. And so I'm very confident that we'll receive those on time. Um, I will say that we were recently informed that the price of those buses was going to be going up because of inflation and supply chain issues. And um, so we actually are going to council next Tuesday to request additional funding to, to pay for those buses. Um, they increased the price on us by about $40,000 each bus, um, which, you know, I can't, can't really blame them. Um, it's happening to everybody, cost increases. So that's just the, the state of the world at this moment. After uh, these are the ones that, that are being delivered from California and Canada? Uh, so Gillig is based in California and they manufacture their buses in California. Um, and those are the ones we'll get in December, those three. And the other ones is, um, are company from a company called Vicinity Motor. And they are based in Canada, but they do some of the assembly in um, Washington State. And then they also do some of the assembly in Florida. I don't really understand all of that and why, but um, we'll be picking those buses up or those our vicinity buses will actually be coming from Florida because that's where the final assembly takes place. Okay. And uh, what about the loan? How many loaner buses do we have? We have four loaner buses, which came from vicinity when we originally placed the order with them. They were, um, they gave us four buses to use and it was only supposed to be for about eight months while those were being, uh, while our new buses that we ordered were being manufactured and then COVID happened. And so we still have those buses, which are the red kind of maroon and white ones that are really ugly. Um, that was supposed to be temporary and it turned into two and a half years. Um, the good news about that is that we've basically been running those buses into the ground and we don't own them. So we're going to give those back to them when they deliver our new buses. And um, so we didn't have to buy those. Okay. And while we're still on the bus thing, um, I've been hearing from uh, drivers that what about the, the mechanics at the garage? If we would really down low on our mechanics at the garage. Um, I'm not aware of any mechanics shortage. LaShawn, or do you know? Um, we, we are only down the tech one position. Um, and the tech one position is like the highest position. And we just hadn't been able to find anyone to fill that position. But that's the only mechanic shortage that we have. Because okay. I've been hearing drivers talk back and forth about, you know, the buses can't get fixed because they didn't have enough qualified mechanics there and they only had one. And that was about a month ago that I heard that. No. Thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. Uh, Bill, uh, you have your hand raised. Yeah, thanks. Well, congratulations on the grant, y'all. Um, how does that work? The The $4.2 million is the grant for six buses. Do, do those six buses cost more than $4.2 million? In other words, does the city have to add some money to the pot to buy the buses? So, so what's the total cost of those six buses? Um, so... Yes, we have to have a match, matching funds. And in this case, for this grant, it's 15%, um, which is less than normal. Normally, it's 20%, but um, only 15 for this. For this. So, so the total, including the three batteries that we have to replace, is um, a little over $5 million, I think. Um, 
each bus is about 800,000 for a hybrid. And the batteries, I believe, are 80 something. That's right. That's what I thought. Okay. I told somebody at a gathering the other day that buses cost close to eight hundred fifty or nine hundred thousand dollars and that sounds right. Um, I was hoping I was in the ballpark. Um, and how does the money work? Are we required to buy six specific buses for that four point two million dollars? Or do they just give us four point two million dollars and let us do with it what we want? How does that work? No, we we applied specifically for that number, um, and we didn't just make that up out of thin air. We we looked at what we what we needed most critically um, for our our fleet replacement schedule, and um, made that request. So we have to stick to what we what we said we were going to get. But did you, what you just said was we requested a number. Are we obligated to specific buses and bus types for that number, or is it a bus specification we applied for? Um, we said that we were going to purchase six hybrid hybrid diesel buses and in partnership with Gillig um, because if we name a partner in the application, then we don't have to go through an RFP process or a bid process. Um, so that partnership is, was part of the application. Okay, so our obligation is, is the manufacturer, it sounds like. And the bus, and, and the type of bus, 30-foot oh, hybrid. Bus. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, and and while we're on the topic, how how many total buses are in the fleet? Thirty. Uh, Thirty-two, I think. Yes. Um, not including the seven that we're going to get. Although thirty-two includes the four loaners, so it'll be thirty-five. Um, when we get the, you know, all seven of our new buses, but we also need to retire some. So, um, so the design size of the fleet is 32, right? When we get more, we'll retire the, we'll retire that number. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we, um, you know, if we implement new service at some point, then, depending on what new service is added, we may need to buy a bus or add another bus. But, you know, we have, um, so we have 32. I think our top, if you scroll up, Haley, and we can share this um, spreadsheet with you guys if you're interested, but um, one, one, one thing that I could let you guys know is that so the vehicle number every bus has a number and it's on the bus out on the outside and on the inside I think um, so if it starts the two numbers that it starts with is the year so you can see we've got five buses that are 2010 so they're about 12 years old they are well over or close to 500,000 miles, which is more than what um, FTA considers the useful life for mileage. Um, we try to get 10 years, uh, we try to get 12 years out of a bus, even though FTA uh, um, considers 10 years to be the life. So you can see we've got a significant number of 2010s and 2012s and really what we should be doing if it were a perfect world we're re we're replacing one twelfth of our fleet every year based yeah. on that 12 year life cycle yeah. um the the reality part is that we don't always get money or have money to do that um so it's not generally good, as you can imagine, to have 
chunks of your fleet aging out at the same time, you want to have kind of a, a spread of years when they were put into service. So, um, you know, these five buses that were in 2010, they're, they're probably going to be replaced with some of these that are coming in in the next few months. Yeah. And they will go to um, bus heaven, wherever that is. <laughs> and lastly, um, if we order six buses, when will they arrive? Um, so Gillig's schedule is typically anywhere between 12 months and 18 months. Okay. Okay, we have Colin and the queue. Yes. So just looking ahead, one in 2012, you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine buses. So I'm assuming you're planning on purchasing another four or five next year and another four or five year after that in order to have a plan schedule to kind of keep getting updated buses every every year if i have money yes i would yeah. be, want to be purchasing four to five buses every year i mean is and that, that's just to replace that's just to replace that's not to grow right so i mean that and we is in the i was just gonna say we don't get money we don't get money for buses unless we apply and and the fta gods give us a money give us a grant so it, it's it's a very um, and this is part of this is part of a larger conversation, but you know the three pillars here are the operations, like the actual service that's running, which is the most expensive part, um, and then the fleet, and then the facilities. And so in September, you're going to see how bad our facilities are, and our fleet situation is also. Um, not the best. It's not as bad as it was. LaShawn can tell you, you know, three, three years ago, we had hundreds of missed trips a month because we had buses breaking down left and right and catching on fire. Um, Google that one. You'll see some good pictures. But um, we are in a much better state of fleet than we were three to four years ago. But it's, troubling when we don't have a dedicated and secure funding source to purchase essentially four to five million dollars of vehicles every year and and these uh, diesel hybrids the efficiency on them over just a standard diesel bus is it significant or Oh, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, you mean efficiency from a from a greenhouse gas perspective? Just a, I would almost say a cost perspective. I mean, you know, using less fuel, is it less maintenance? I mean, is it a combination? You know, is it more maintenance? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. The parts are more expensive. The batteries, so the battery placements um, on the diesels, I'm sorry, on the hybrids, the batteries have to be replaced um, mid life cycle. And those are, like I said, $80,000 or so. But there's other parts, I think, that are, and this is not my area of expertise, but there are other parts that are associated with the, the hybrids that are more costly to replace than a diesel. So, um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's another thing that we sometimes get criticized about is that we're not buying electric or we are buying diesels and not hybrids. Um, and for me, it's like, well, I just want to get the service. I want to have a healthy fleet that can run service and get people to where they go in the most cost-effective way. Um, and 
this particular grant that we applied for and received is called the Low and No Emissions Grant. And so we could only apply for hybrids or um, electrics. We applied for hybrids because electrics are um, troubling or, yeah, just to be blunt, there's a lot of issues with them. Yeah, well, I mean, you you got to look at your time value of money and what your capital costs are and your maintenance cost and for the service life. And if, if one is costing a hundred thousand more than another, there's got to be some reason behind it. And also, I think you previously yeah. mentioned at a prior meeting that aren't the electrics much larger buses that we do don't have a need for, which is a problem. It's not that we don't have a need, it's that they're physically too big for many of our roadways. So we can't drive them on um, half of our routes. Like Merriman? And um, <laughs> no, it's really more about um, ring radius and the wheelbase distance. So it's, a, it's about going over, going around turns that the 36 foot electric can't do. Um, and nobody is making a 30 foot electric yet, except for uh, a Chinese company, which um, we're not allowed to buy from. It's not and not yeah, and uh, a company, the company that we have been waiting for almost three years for our four buses. They just started making a 30 foot electric, but I'm not going to purchase anything from them anytime soon. Um, Gillig has started making an electric, but they don't have a 30 foot. They've only made a 35 and a 40 and a 60. And um, we're hoping that someday they'll make a 30 foot or maybe a 32 because um, Gillig has been a very reliable, well-made company for a long time. Who Who is, do you know who Greensboro has been using? That, have they been, hasn't Greensboro been exploring with going electric and using a specific manufacturer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, they have Proterra's, which is what our electrics are. So the biggest electric bus company in the U.S. is Proterra. Proterra does not make a 30-foot bus. Okay. Um, so the buses that we have from them are, are too big. Um, they also only get about half of the um, mileage than we need. So... Um, that's what we struggle with is, is a diesel bus is about 500 grand can run 18 hours a day. A hybrid is about 800 grand also can run 18 hours or more a day. And an electric bus is a million plus and can only run six to eight hours. And so, I'm not the topography is impacts that as well. Exactly. Topography, temperature, um, and the size. So it's not just the size that's a problem for us with electrics at the moment. It's the range, and you know the 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 technology is getting better um, every day. But when we're making an investment, when we have so little money and we don't have regular money coming in. It, I, I don't think the city really can like, yes, everybody wants to go electric. Everybody wants to save the earth, but we're running a system here that's very expensive to run. And for me, I'm always going to want to invest in what I know is going to get the job done. Um, and, the and the hybrids are kind of a, happy medium, if you will. And since we got grant money to buy them, it's sort of like a freebie. But everything we've been buying over the last few years has been just a straight diesel because that's what we could afford. 
Okay. All right. Is there any more on that discussion? Okay, moving on. Uh, Transit Committee member updates and rider experiences. Would anybody like to give me some conversation on that before I enjoy? Okay. Um, I've been asked to I'll probably do this the next three meetings or so to uh, talk about the uh, committee members and riding the bus. Uh, committee members, it is, I just wrote this down as much as community members, it is much appreciated if you ride the bus at your, your leisure experience. The experience will be worthy of your time. Talk to passengers, ask drivers questions that you need answers for. Compliment the drivers for their safety uh, transporting uh, individuals uh, and your experience. Let driver know about your experience. Uh, let them know who you are and you're a part of the art. Ask for redefining, redefining transit and uh, what your experience is as far as, you know, coming into the community and being a member. And in closing, it's like to say, uh, I hope you have a nice riding experience on the art. But we need our committee members to necessarily ride the uh, buses and, you know, give the drivers your experience as well. Uh, and, you know, learn from, it's a two-way system as far as, you know, learning and everything like that. And notice things about the bus and whatnot as far as, this past month, I put wrote these things down just from me getting on the bus and knowing how the bus runs and uh, how drivers should be uh, as far as what the, their duties are. Uh, I got on the bus and the seats where uh, they put the wheelchairs, they were up both side, both uh, portions, sections of it. They were up. All these things, I'm not asking for discussion because I've already notified staff of these and they have been taken care of and this is just things that i myself have noticed that i relay the message to staff for them to uh, handle it and the seats were up and that's space for passengers to come in and sit down and they weren't up and the signage at uh stop stop, stop where i got on it was missing, and I catch the, the bus right there all the time. I hadn't noticed it. I noticed it, and uh, I said, really? I've been catching the bus here that long, and I hadn't noticed that. But that has been taken care of. And um, also, when we're training our drivers, they're uh, standing forward of the yellow line, and that gives me great uh resolve as far as them going through the window every I mean, bus uh, stopped real suddenly and um the drivers as well uh notice the passengers when they come on the bus with knives and they're not able to respond if you know they would get attacked or something like that but that's more prevalent in the uh newer bus the electric buses and we have the shields to put up in the electric buses now that came in last Wednesday. And that gives the driver some protection in the electric buses. And uh, that was brought to my attention by one of the drivers. And I told her who I was. And, you know, I was in the committee. And she asked me to look into that. And just so happens the shields for the electric buses came in that same week and uh it's being addressed but they came in but uh, certain parts were missing and as soon as they get the parts they will be put into the electric buses but uh this being aware of your driving experience and being a committee member 
Harvey, I just want to piggyback off of what you just said. Um, um, once you do ride the bus um, and you run into an, um, an area that needs some attention, if you would reach out to myself or Haley or Amy um, immediately so we can get those problems resolved or issues resolved um, instead of waiting until these meetings to get addressed. Exactly. That's why I said uh, staff is already taking care of these uh, situations that I found. But uh, it's with, with their eyes and ears as well. Well, anyone else like to talk about their writer experience? Oh, I forgot. Uh, also, LaShawn, um, I would like for you to give these drivers a shout out. I met this time around uh, Tracy and Stephanie. And um, they were, you know, very uh, outstanding drivers, as well as Charles, Ernie, Craig, Greg, D, and Charlene. I love my art drivers. Will do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, departmental updates, monthly updates memo, June through July. Is there anything we need to know about that staff? Uh, no, sir. Okay, operation updates. Is there anything that we need to know in that area? Um, no, everything is documented. It's there for everybody to look at. Uh, if there's anything else from any of my present com committee members, I would love to hear it. And staff would as well. And if there's no further discussion, I call this Harvey. Turn. It's Kim. Harvey, this is Commit, uh, this is Kim. I I just want to say, as the liaison to the Multimodal Transportation Commission, I've been sitting on the meeting, and I just want to thank you all for your service. Thank you, Commissioner Roman. I mean, Councilwoman Roman. <laughs> I'm glad you're here today. I'm glad you're here. Glad to be and, here with you. We'll keep re recruiting and um, congratulations to the staff on successful outcomes from applying for the um, low no emission vehicle grant. Well done. Thanks, Cam. Well, I hereby adjourn this meeting thanks harvey all right thanks everyone thanks thanks, thanks everybody see ya see you in september <laughs>